Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tech Talk tonight. This is episode number 61. I am coming to here to you from the basement, Slim Video Enrichment Center. Why do you call it that? Because it's a portal reference. I'm joined, as always, by my inevitable co-host, Mr. Gavin Ray Camper. How are you, sir? I am great. How about you? I am well. What uh, have you been up to this have, past week? Um, past week's been all work and doing stuff around the house, and this week's probably going to be a heck of a lot more of the same. But Are you all doing some, well? uh, some mulching? Some some no. uh, lawn, lawn mowing? It's more like um, I'm doing a lot of watering because it's not raining around here, so everything's dying if you don't water it. Yeah, Katie and I realized that no one was watering our place because our upstairs neighbors are moving to doesn't matter. And <laughs> so that means they stopped watering the front, so we had to. I got gotcha. you. Anyway. Anyway. What happened in tech this week? Uh, what happened in tech this week? Um, I don't know. It's kind of a slow news week, to be honest, I think. Uh, not, not, not a heck of a lot of uh, stories that we posted here in our, um, you know, on our subreddit, uh, Slash r slash tech talk tonight on reddit dot com. Um, Gavin, what um, what's up with tech stories this week? It seems a little slow. It is very slow. I think the first story that was leaked today is the most. I mean, we basically report on Apple news. This is what we do. Yeah, and you're not even an Apple user. Really. I hate Apple. I don't know why. But they released a their own podcast application today. Yes, and we just so happen to be featured on it. Well. No. By featured, I mean we're, we're on it if you search for Tech Talk tonight. But, okay, so... By featured, we mean not the featured section is what you would think. You're right. You can search for Tech Talk tonight. Right. So we have... It's just called Podcast. By um, Apple. It's not like this is the first time you can get a podcast on an Apple device. They were the ones that kind of, you know, made podcasts popular with their iPod. And that's kind of how it got its name and everything. Other people, you know, started calling them netcasts, so they weren't infringing upon Apple. But, okay, so... They have it as part of iTunes, but now they're just putting it... I mean, I mean, it's not that exciting news, but it's interesting because there's a lot of podcast apps out there, and now presumably they'll all be, you know, everybody will download this. Right. So, it's, it's, before, what were you using as your, like, podcast app or such? I was using Podcaster, which is pretty good. You can, uh... You can mark, like, hey, I want to keep, um, you know, it'll download via, uh, like, the over-the-air OTA, and uh, you can say keep, keep like, one or two or three episodes saved, and it would mark it as red, and it would save your spot and everything. Um, but this one is very similar, except you don't have as much control, because that means that, uh, you know, Apple doesn't like to give you control. No, they don't. I'm just, you know, running around. Never mind. Never um, mind the man. But are you going to use this or are you going to use your I, old? I downloaded it today, but, you know, like a month ago I downloaded Podcaster and paid, what, 99 I think Podcaster is better. I think this one's crap. Because you can't say, um, like some of my podcasts that I don't listen to, I say only keep the latest. Right. Even if I don't listen to it. See, I like that option. This does not have that. Yeah. But it does have the skip forward button that iTunes didn't. So I can skip through Podcaster has that too. I know. And that's one thing that I liked. That is key. I, you know, the twit like, do, do, do. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard these, uh, you know, several times. It's time to, you know, I already belong to Squarespace and Netflix. I'm not going to use Pond5 and, you know, continue on. Um, so anyway, in other news. Uh, Rob, is, Rob is say, trying to remind us Rob. that Microsoft... A Rob in the chat rooms that yes. Microsoft bought y bought Yammer, and we talked about that in the pre-show, but we didn't think is that that exciting I, to you? Hey, you I, didn't even know what Yammer is. Well, hang on, it, it, are we aim to please our chat room? So, Gavin, take it away. Why do you use Yammer? Because you're you're an actual user. Yammer. Yammer. It's like yams. That's what I said. You said Gammer. What? <laughs> What's uh, Yammer, Gavin? Yammer is like Facebook or Twitter for your company. So. If you post on it, only people in your company, a.k.a. people with your at blankityblank.com email address, can see your posts. Um, so it's pretty good for collaborating in a company, especially if you have people working like off-site or in different locations, which everybody does these days. Is there a way that I can tune in and look at people's yammers? Like, I want to see the NASA yammer, as Doug has pointed out, that it's for the win. 
No, see, that's the point. That I mean, presumably if someone hacked the service, yes, that would be possible. But the point of the service is that you can only see the messages from people, well, however they set it up. But in ju- the default is like anyone at, you know, at, if it's at Microsoft, if your email is at Microsoft.com, you're in the Microsoft network and you can only see people from Microsoft. Fair enough. So we at Wash U are not cool enough to do something of this tech nature. What's your, wait, what, don't you have emails like at WSTL.org or something? Yes. Dot well, .edu. Well, okay. Dot .edu. Same thing. No, no, nobody's using Yammer, though. I bet you if I walked in Dude, to, si- like, you don't. You can meeting, sign up right now. I don't want to. Nobody else is using it, I guarantee you. How do you know? I will go look it up. Okay. You'll report to us I on the next show. Back. Um, more exciting news is some follow-ups from last week. Brayden, the oatmeal, posted a hilarious thing about... Yes! I see. I like this one. Um, so this is actually really funny. So this isn't week, news, but... Last week, I, I posed the question out to the chat room, and I could just assume that the oatmeal was one of our viewers, obviously. And my question was, what tech out there can better create the experience for the, the moviegoer? And, uh, the you know, he, the oatmeal comes out with comics on a weekly basis, is that right? Anyway, he he comes out with like infographic like videos and or videos and the oatmeal is involved in that lawsuit which yes. we talked about last week. It's true. So once again, we have the oatmeal. He provided a layout of what he thinks a movie theater should be laid out as. Now he does have one like actual like not necessarily funny thing put on there, and he says provide jacks so I can use my noise canceling headphones if I want. That's genius. Why I do agree. they not do that? I, well, first and up, then there's also of the jacks. toilet of shame located above the screen discourages people from getting up to use the bathroom during the film. Right. <laughs> and there is a giant bubble in which all loud talkers and babies would be forced to sit in. And it's essentially below the screen and they would have to kill their necks to actually see. And it's a soundproof glass dome, so others will not be able to hear it. And also he puts that there would be a microphone and like all the normal seats... And the microphone would pick up how much you talk during the film, and you essentially have, like, this score, and if your score goes below a certain level, you get sent to the soundproof glass dome. That's funny. This will never happen. No, it'll never happen, but I think the audio jacks could. The audio jacks could and should happen. I would bring my high-quality Sennheisers that I got for $25. Like the ones around your head? No, I have better ones than this. What? Okay, first off, those cost more than $25. It, it continuing what the, on. S- s- follow, <laughs> another follow-up from last week, the audio file. The audio what file. Do you, what do you think... Actually, that's a story. What's the story? Talk about this? Which one do you want? Which one do you want? Audio quality related to the show about, the, about this. Oh, you posted it early. Oh, well, we'll talk about this after your second story. Okay. So what's your second story? So my second story... Highland related. Is, okay. Um, we've talked about geocaching somewhat on this show and such. Yes, it's and one of your favorite things, even though you've only done it like once. That's not true. I've geocached in five different states now. The first time I learned about geocaching was on Tech TV. Mine was on Totally Rad Show. So I knew about it longer than you. Yes, Thanks. you did. Anyway, um, I went and submitted. We now have a travel bug that is labeled as such. Um, the name of it is techtalktonight.com, and its goal is Petaluma, California, or bust. Um, so we're going to put this in one of the geocaches here in Highland, and hopefully it will make it all its way all the way to California, and Leo will find it. Cause and then he'll plug our show. Yes. So you put Tech Talk Tonight on there? Yeah, it's on there. Good job. Um, so that's what they do with geocaches now. They like You can say get to some place and well, people it, try to get to that place. Yep. You assign a goal to your bug. If you go to our subreddit and check out the story for this, I actually the link that I put to it is the actual travel um like page created and tied to this tag. Um it's called a rainbow cash t shirt, actually, because this tag is um uh it's connected with the number that is on the back of the shirt that I bought my wife. Um so you know, I don't I don't know how that anyway. It's disturbing. 
Anyway, continuing on, um, you will be able to keep going to this geocache page, and it will tell you where it's um, recently been spotted. And right now, it just says in the hands of the owner, and they're correct. Now, oh my gosh! Now this is strikingly similar to something that we talked about six months or it's been six a while. Ago, I think I know what you're talking about. The camera thing. Yes. What was it called? I don't even know. You were the one that was touting it. I don't remember what it was called. <laughs> Well, isn't that embarrassing? <laughs> uh, maybe someone in the chat room will remember, but basically the camera thing where you dispose the d- disposable camera project. And mine. Thank you, Rob. Wait, was it Rob? What? G O catch. Anyway, the disposable memory project. I put a thing out there in the University City, St. Louis. Someone picked it up. They reported it that they picked it up, and they never sent it out. No. So hopefully that doesn't happen to your geocache. Well, let's say, hope not. The, the people are pretty good about them. Just as long as they, you know, somebody doesn't get it that doesn't actually know what a geocache is. And like, ooh, it's a dog tag, blah, blah, blah. And, you know. So next up are a few geeky stories from me. Geeky. The first one, all you programmers out there will enjoy. Sublime Text 2, if you don't know, has been released. Is this a Mac, uh, a PC-only product, or am I going to be able to use this on my Mac? It's on Mac, PC, and Linux, and that's Ooh. what pe- that's what programmers okay. like about it. Yeah. They, uh, It's like a similar experience no matter what platform you go on to. Um, and it's been in production, it's been in beta for a while, and people have really liked it. It's like a, basically a text editor, you know, like, if those, those of you out there who don't know, it's kind of like, you know, Notepad yeah. or... Notepad, Notepad++. Plus plus. Plus. It's better than no- Notepad++ plus plus in many really? respects. Okay. Um, is it free? It is. They've got an interesting business model, which maybe we should think about for the podcast. Okay. It reminds you every once in a while that, hey, this isn't licensed. The rule is that you have to buy a license after 30 days, but that's not enforced. So, essentially, you can use it. What? You broke Reddit. That's bad. Um, so basically, what are you doing? I'm showing off yet another camera angle. <laughs> so basically, if you don't pay for it, you don't have to pay, but you should. Um, and this is really good software, so lots of people pay for it. Okay. So you're going to download so and use it? Do I have to pay for it? No. But, but you're going to, like, force me to pay for it. Eh, it's I $60. I haven't paid for it yet, but I plan to. Okay. Mm, I will definitely test it out. I'll give it that much. Um, next is the Facebook story that everyone is freaking out about, but that's only because it's a slow news day. What is this Facebook story? I'm not freaking out about this. Um, okay, so Facebook um, went and changed something without asking you if they could change it, which I believe is kind of their right, but people just get up in arms about it. Um, if you go and check out your uh, about on your timeline, you will notice that, well, some people will notice this is a soft rollout, uh, that your email has changed to whatever you set up your vanity uh, URL as at Facebook. So I set up the vanity of Braden H, just like my Twitter, at Braden H. And at Braden H at Facebook.com is now an email that you would be able to reach me at. And that is what currently appears on my Facebook page. Now, I don't have a big deal about this, but... Let's see if we can grind Gavin's gear. Da, 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 da. This, this really angers me. This happened to me. It happened to you and it happened to me. If you go into my profile and you click about, right under websites where I list many of my websites and my screen name and my address, all information that I put in myself, may it be known, it says email gavinr at facebook.com. Yes. As if I endorsed putting Gavinar at Facebook.com as if I want people to send me email there. Who knows where that email goes to? I don't even know. Where does that email go to? It goes to your Facebook page. You would get it through your Facebook message. Yeah, so that's shady. It's not that shady in the fact... Okay, how much personal information do you really want to be sending out through Facebook? You're not trying to like professionally promote yourself through Facebook, are you? Uh, maybe I am. I mean, the pr- it's not that, are. it's not the thing. It's not the it's the principle of the thing, right? It's not that it's really bad for me, but it's really bad in principle that they're changing stuff and acting like it's something that I posted on there. See, 
Okay, one, I think that this story came out and was circulated enough today that everybody would, that would care about it has seen it and are like, eh, okay, everybody's face, everybody's email got changed to Facebook. That happens. That and doesn't then, happen. What, th- it did happen. No, it doesn't. It did. It happened. Past tense. Done. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, okay, first off. What if you're someone who never logs into Facebook? And then someone sends you, like, a very important email to that email saying, like, I want to offer you a new job or whatever, and you never get that because you never log into Facebook. Well, first off, who the heck is offering you jobs through Facebook? Because they saw your email on Facebook. That sounds shady right there to quote (laughs) yourself. I'm just throwing out an idea of what could happen. I guess. For what? I I think I, I don't even want my normal... Uh, email on Facebook. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's what they said. They said, hey, now spammers won't be able to get your actual email, which is yeah. maybe okay, but that's because s- it's some day in the future they're going to make your profile all public even though you don't want to. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So maybe you should just start taking off more and more information now. Or maybe change my birthday to January 1st, 1982. <laughs> Perhaps. Like some of us uh, on this show. I want to clearly state that as of a couple weeks ago, my birthday is my correct birthday on my Facebook. I look forward to all your happy birthday announcements on my actual birthday this year. Uh, speaking of a special day... Are you calling my birthday a special day? Right now, we are going to transition to the subreddit of the week. Well, Gavin gave us the theme song this week. All right, so our subreddit of the week is the subreddit of the day. What? No, it's called subreddit of the week. Yes. That's the segment. Uh, Our segment is called subreddit of the week. Yeah. And it is... Subreddit of the day. Ooh. What? That exists? But what? They copied off of us? No, they've been doing this for a long time, it seems. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, we stumbled upon a subreddit called Subreddit of the Day. And they've been picking subreddits every day for a very long time. Um, Their page looks pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's it's nice. I um, like the style. Th- they, they've done very well, and they're doing it better than we are, it seems, and they get a lot of upvotes, and, it you know, it's nice. I'm glad that somebody else thought of this and, you know, actually put it to good use. I mean, um, this just proves, like, honestly, this was, whose idea was this? This was my idea, to put it on our, our, our show, right? Uh, Pretty sure we can go back to the chat logs. Anyway. We, we should go back to the chat logs. It was one of our ideas... And we did not see this, and we legitimately didn't know about this, but it just proves the fact that there's no original content. original ideas under the sun. As the Bare Naked Lady said, it's all been done. It's true. It's all been done. But and the internet just makes that easier. Like, do you face this problem, Brian? Like, you think of a re- like really great idea, either like like for a website or for like something to do in the world, like this cool project. You know, like I'm gonna. And have you need hosting for said website, and you should go to Square. Oh wait, dang it! We don't actually have spot. No, Never but mind. even Sorry. like an idea, like oh, let's get a lot of people to like show up at the square and do this cool thing. Oh wait, That's a, a grade school, a, a grade school in Oklahoma did that five years ago, oh. and it's on YouTube. Like everything's been done. You can't do anything new anymore. <sighs> ah. It's true. It's all been done. Anyway, everybody go to subreddit of the day. No one from that subreddit is watching us because we were too embarrassed uh, yeah, to we, post the fact that we are copying off of them, even though we're not copying. It's true. And I think we can like successfully like point them back to the show at this point, and they'll know that we you know, didn't copy off of them. Because we totally didn't copy off of you. We've been doing this for a couple weeks, and now we stumbled upon you. But we're going to keep doing it because it gets us random viewers. Because it's true. The same reason why you are alive... It's because we're going to keep doing it. And since we both thought of it, you know, it means it's probably a good idea. Anyway, if, you know, subreddit of the day, you know, wanted to go back and look at our show notes and stuff, where would they be able to do that, Gavin? Well, we have a new wiki that's basically going to be the repository of all the information about our shows. Ooh, sounds fancy. And this is where all of our fans out there, we know there are at least multiple people out there the more than one right obviously now. more than one person um so there's two of us you can all go and 
post, we're going to have a, a page per episode, which is g essentially going to be show notes plus more information like the YouTube video, the MP3 link. You know, like great quotes, fun facts about the show. There are so many, I know. And um, you can also create pages on just anything that you want to. So it, it's hosted on Wikia. It's, you can get to it via techtalktonight.com. There's a show notes link. There is a link there now. Wiki go link. check it out. Does it say Wiki or show notes? Uh, it says Wiki. Or you can go to techtalktonight.wikia.com to see it. And if you go to episodes and you want to contribute by adding some data about one of the episodes, we would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> in the chat room, Rob has pointed out that there is not only subreddit of the day, but there's subreddit of the week and weekly Reddit. Reddit, sorry. Um, so it seems many people are doing this exact Wait, same thing. Wait, subreddit of the week is private. That hardly counts. That's interesting. Why would they private that? We should try to um, become members. Know, that <laughs> anyway, like a bad idea. All anyway, right. where can uh, people find you online, Braden? They can find me over at Braden H on Twitter. So I think that's where we're going to tell you to check out this week. That or HensyDigitalMedia.com. That's where I tend to hang out. And, Mr. Gavin, where can they find you on the Mr. Webs? Uh, GavinR.com. I'm going to post a insightful article soon on nonprofit and church websites and how they fail all the time. How they fail all of How you time. can fail about making them and why you shouldn't. Is there any way that they could succeed? I don't know. <laughs> Tune in to find out. Tune in. And that's our show for this week. I want to thank everybody in our chat room. You are a loyal bunch, despite you begrudgingly being here sometimes. Doug, I'm looking at you, obviously. And, uh, you know, um, I lost my train of thought. Sign up for us on iTunes via the new podcaster app. Yeah, that would be awesome. Or subscribe to us on YouTube. Or subscribe to us on, what is this, justin.tv, and you'll get emails when we go live. That would be sweet. That would be sweet. We should promote that more. Maybe I'll link that on the side, too. And I think that does it for us. Uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Adios. Adios. Adios.